Okay, welcome back. This is video number two. We're going to continue the work that we we're doing yesterday, uh, or I should say the other day, because yesterday, when you watch this on YouTube, it might have been six months since you saw the other uh, video. So we're going to do the bottom of the card now, and the reason that I do the bottom of the card second is that will then tell me what my spacing is for the rest of everything else that needs to go in here. It's really easy to build all these elements. You get to the bottom of the card and you've got everything looking the way you want it to and then you have no room for some fancy footwork at the end. So we're going to do um, the bottom of this thing and I'm going to show you how you can take a pre-existing piece from a previous asset and duplicate it and move it over. So this card here, if I just click on this Cleveland card group, you'll notice how this is all highlighted. This is all one group, and if I expand this, you'll see there's a header, and that header is all of this information. You'll notice that there's a card variables group, which when I click on that, it's all the center information. And then I have a footer. When I click on that, it's all of this information. So what I'm gonna do and you have to be very careful. Anytime you have one of these expanded, th these things open where the this arrow is a, a down arrow, it means you could accidentally edit into that. So I close everything except the Cleveland footer group. I'm going to close the footer group in its entirety. I'm going to right click it and duplicate. Okay, so then it duplicates in place. So there is a second version of this on top. You can't see it. I'm going to take, click on this particular version here. I'm going to drag it into place between the two card headers. So I have a header and a footer now for this card. And I go to the move function, this little black arrow. I click right on this box that's highlighted in blue, and I just slide it, and all the red lines show up to keep me in line, and drop it. So once I've created it, I don't have to go back through and recreate it. I can just continue to duplicate it and move it into the new cards. So I'll close this so that the Cleveland card group is over, and now I've just got these two things, and I've got this. Again, this was created by putting in a picture frame, and I'm going to click this and highlight it, put in a picture frame, and added that image of the thundercloud. Then I created a text box for the word Cleveland, and notice that the text box is shorter than the box itself, so I have a little spacing at the end. It's nine point font with a yellow color. I've got my rectangle, which is in the same color as the card above. I have the team nickname, same as the text box here. I have the footer rectangle, and then I have a plain text box on its own. So you can just put plain text box on there if you don't need it to be fancy. And that is how you create that. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create these lines right here and here. Um, actually, I'm going to do that after I do the table because I have to create the table first. When you're doing the ratings here and here and any numeric information, you want to use tables. So this is your table tool right here. And once you do that, I'm going to create this table again, two millimeters from the edge. I'm going to drag it all the way over. And I'm going to come down here until I create six rows. Why six rows? Because there's a maximum of six batting characteristics, but there's only a maximum of four on the pitching side. And we're creating a combined card here. And so uh, we do that. And it, you'll notice that this grid is bigger than that grid. Um, and that's because these are set higher. So I'm going to highlight, just like I would in Excel, these columns. And I'm going to just click, see where that turns into an arrow? You can barely see it right there. Drag it 
until I have them four millimeters high and the lines line up with that. And then I'm going to go into the table and insert a column. And now I have my table for my ratings. I don't want the lines there. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, some interesting possibilities here, but what I'm going to do is oh, I'm still in table mode again. I'm, as long as that's still on, I'm in table mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the columns and I'm going to go over here to this table tab and I should, there it is, stroke and fill. Here's the different borders. I'm going to click on this one because that's all. Notice all the borders light up and then they're currently black. I'm going to change them to transparent. Once I do that, I can click someplace over here. Boom, I'm done. I'm still in table mode, so I come back over here and we'll type in, well, this guy's going to be a hero. And as a pitcher, he's going to be, oh, let's call him uh, Ace with a semi. And he's also a ch full champion. Um, he's nothing there. Um, here he's a scrapper. And he's, oh, uh, let's go, let's go double flash. And we'll go, um, nothing for the fourth thing. And uh, no control. And then we'll do, uh, Whiffer, semi Whiffer, and we'll do Eager. Right now, that's again, if I take that and click out of here, that doesn't look good at all. We go back into the table, and now we can apply the font. Go to the font, and again, a reminder this is Arial Nova condensed. And 12 point is way too big, so we're going to knock that down to 10 point. Uh, so it's still big. I don't like 10. I like the 9. I like the 9. I can then uh, go into table mode, go over this column, and align it to the right. And there you have your player ratings right there. Just perfectly placed. Um, then we're going to use the move tool. Make sure that's fine. And I really want to move just the table. The table appears here. And just making sure everything looks good. Okay. Uh, now I need to move this around because the table is in the footer and I don't want it to be in the footer. So I'm going to click this and move it up in here between the header and the footer. So now when I click on the footer, that's the footer. There's the header. And there's the middle part. Now we're going to add some lines. There's two lines here. Just to give it a little pizzazz, a little uh, something different. There's a pen tool here, and we click on this pen tool. And there are then a bunch of different types of things that you can do with this. You have line mode, and I'm going to use the line mode. And I'm going to come right down here and start right above there. Follow the grid line. Right across. And now I can do my stroke. I'm going to make it black. And it's already on 0.8 font, so we're going to leave it there. And then I'm going to do it again. Pen tool. Over here. Draw it in. Stroke is good. Only thing I want to do is I want to use the move tool. I want to move this just up 
on that line right there. And this one I want to move down. Oh, a little bit. I want to line it up. If you touch it just briefly, it's going to be sticky. There we go. Had it. Some of this is just touch. I think I should be able to just, yeah. Just move it, and now those are kind of the same. Kinda. Maybe not perfectly. I think that's because I have this table set a little differently. Matter of fact, why don't I do this? Let's go back into table mode. And what would happen if I decided that nine point is just too big? And that I like eight point better. And let me double check these spacings on here and make sure that they are really 4.0. They are. So we're good. I think this one might just have a little spacing issue, and that's fine. So now you've got a card that's starting to look a little nice. Question then comes down to what I've done here is I put icons. This is a speed icon, a glove, and the calendar is essentially the experience. I'm going to do this one a little differently on this set of cards. And what I have is I'm going to use just just count these out. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have 20 squares across here. And I have three items. Well, that doesn't, 20 doesn't go into that. Three doesn't go into 20, but it does go into 18, which means I have three uh, six spot pieces here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a text box. I'm going to go in one square and go over six. That's 12 millimeters. And I'm going to do running. Make sure I got this right. Yep, got this right. And I want to do a condensed. I want to do seven point. Font. I want to take the bolding off. And I'm just going to have to find. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sometimes you just have to play with this. Running. Oh, runnings. Uh -huh. Do that. And all you do is move the handles and make this make the thing the size you want it to be. I'll do seven point font. Maybe I'll do six. And then I can move this down to two. And then bring this over to there. So we have that. That's the running piece. And then I will duplicate that. So that's uh, that is this. So I'll right click that and do duplicate. Click on the duplicate and choose that and move that next door. Then take this one and duplicate. And again, taking that. And going next door. And then I'll use the text box running, fielding, that may not fit. But actually it does, just barely, so running fielding experience. And then for 
the data, you want to go to the table tool and build a table that is also the same size, but we're going to make it four high. And we need three columns, so you just do a table, insert column, table, insert column. We want to highlight that and center this. Align center. We also want to align it vertically. Oh, that reminds me. While we're in table mode, we'll go up here. I think part of the reason this may not look quite the way we want it to is that we did not center it vertically, and now we have, so I feel better about that now. I don't know why I feel better about that. I just do. And as a matter of fact, that allows me, again, I'm going to go back over here and do the selection tool. I'm going to move this line right there. It's going to make my box, my table look a little neater. Um, again, back in table mode. Highlight this. We say the borders have to be turned off. Make them transparent. And then we can type in, uh, let's see, let's do active. Let's do gold, and let's do prospect, semi-prospect. Obviously way too big, but we should be fine. And we go here, I believe we chose nine point font. We also have to go and choose the Arial Nova. Condensed. We want to center it in the middle, and it's too big for what we want to do. And so we're going to have to do something with that. What do we do with it? Well, it's already 9-point font. This is 8-point, so we have probably just need to make it 8-point then. Still doesn't deal with the, the what's going on with the prospect piece, so we can actually. I can't really do that. I need to center it across the thing, which we've done, and you'll see that the card's just not wide enough to hold that the way we want it to. So we would have to take this table and stretch it out. Again, bear with me. Stretch the table out to the edges. That changes a couple of things. It means that these text boxes have to move. It still doesn't change our issue that we have there. And so as a result, unless you're willing to go to a seven point font, which is even smaller, and again, dealing with, you know, smaller, older, more tired eyes, uh, you run the risk of having guys go, yeah, those are not good cards. That's see that that's where we that's what gets us where we need to be. And we would just nudge. And just nudge these over just a little bit. Want we'll to line them up. Notice how it's lining it up with the piece there. Perfect. There we go. And so you have that. That's going to be seven point font. Um, you'd have to take a look at it. So if I go to view and I zoom view, zoom to document it gives you an, a sense of, it's going to be pretty tiny. You'd have to print that out and, and take a look at it. So that's a way to do that. And I think for now we will uh, go back and blow this up again and say that for now we have set you up perfectly to at least be able to create a card that has all the basic information on it. 
And I think the next time we will focus on how to put this information here and how to create this when you don't have this. Um, and you want to change that, that look. But for right now, that is lesson number two. Well, once again, thank you for joining us, and we will catch you again sometime soon. Thank you very much, and so long.